Hello, and welcome to Early Voting Training with Ramsey County Elections. My name is Josh, and I will be talking us through this PowerPoint presentation that we have for early voting in 2021. To start, I'll be reviewing and overviewing what early voting is in Ramsey County. Next, I'll be talking about the specific roles that election judges will play during that week. Then I'll be touching on the personal protective equipment that we'll be deploying in our early voting locations this year. And then last, I'll be talking about some other additional administrative duties like curbside voting or ballot return uh, or campaigning in the polling place. But before we get into any of that, remember to vote. You'll be able to cast your ballot at one of our early voting locations if you live in Ramsey County. Uh, additionally, if you're a head judge on election day, we do have some election day materials that normally you would come to our office to collect on the Saturday before election day. However, since you'll be working at an early voting location, we will be delivering these materials that's called the blue tub drop off on Saturday, October 30th at your specific early voting location. Okay, let's get into the overview for early voting. This year in 2021, we'll be opening five early voting locations. So other than our office here at the Plato building uh, in uh, south of downtown St. Paul, we'll also be opening the Arlington Hills Community Center, the First Tee building at the Highland Golf Course, the Frogtown Community Center, and the Roseville Library. All of these locations will be featured on a interactive map that will show uh, where voters can cast their ballot or um, where voters can drop off their ballot that they received in the mail. Each early voting location will have consistent hours, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesday through Friday, Saturday 10 to 3. Sunday will be closed and then we'll open up the day before election day at 10 a.m. and go until 5. So that, those hours apply to all of the locations except for the Plato office building, which will have extended hours during this time period. On Tuesday, the first day of early voting, we'd like you to report to your location at 9 a.m. And then for the subsequent days, if you can report 30 minutes before the start of voting. At the early voting locations in Ramsey County, any voter can visit any of the locations for the seven days before election day. That means that all locations will have all of the ballots in Ramsey County. You'll be administering this process with a laptop computer and using a centralized database that's called the Statewide Voter Registration System. And it does operate a little different from polling places on Election Day. And so this activity does fall under some of Minnesota's absentee voting laws. So let's talk about some of the differences between early voting and election day. So during the early voting period, all voters are required to complete the absentee ballot application before they're issued a ballot. Now that's not a Ramsey County policy, that's a Minnesota state law. So in fact, if uh, any voter in Minnesota wants to vote before election day, they're required to complete an absentee ballot application. Now on election day, if you're a pre-registered voter, you don't have to complete any paperwork and you certainly don't have to complete that application. During the early voting period, we offer multiple locations that serve all of the voters in Ramsey County. However, on election day, you are assigned a specific polling place in which you can go to and vote. During the early voting period, we use a laptop computer and a central database and on election day, we, we still use some technology, it's called the poll pad, but the poll pad is assigned to a specific precinct and only serves those voters. The early voting period lasts the week before election day. So this year that's October 26th through November 1st. And then we have election day, which is Tuesday, November 2nd. And that's of course only open for one day. There are a couple processes though that apply to both periods or both events. So that's, we'll start with the election day registration process. If you're familiar uh, with working at a polling place on election day, you know somebody can register to vote and then go ahead and cast their ballot in that same transaction. You can also do that during the early voting period. 
Um, and then during these two periods, the voter is depositing their ballot into a ballot counter. And that's important because voters also have the chance to vote through the mail, um, but they would be putting their ballot into an envelope. So during the early voting period, we, we don't use envelopes. The voters are able to slide their ballot right into the counter, just like they do on election day. So this picture illustrates the flow that you'll see in an early voting location. So when voters enter on the left side here, they're greeted by an election judge and they're told that they need to fill out that absentee ballot application that we talked about. Once that's done, they go and visit what we call the SVRS judge. That's the person that's working on the computer. They enter in the voters information based on what they've written on that absentee ballot application. Then they determine which ballot that the voter should receive. Uh, the ballot gets pulled by an election judge and given to the voter. Then they'll be able to, just like on election day, go to a voting booth, fill out their ballot, and then deposit it into a ballot counter. Okay, so that's a general overview of early voting in Ramsey County. Now we're gonna talk about the specific election judge roles that you'll see in each of these locations. The first is the greeter judge. So of course they're there to say hello and welcome, greet the voter, tell them then that they're in the right spot and that they'll be able to vote today. They'll need to instruct the voter to complete that absentee ballot application, but they'll also have sample ballots. So we'll have a book at each location and in that book will be every precinct's ballot. So in Ramsey County, we have about 170. So we'll have 170 sample ballots that will be bound in a book that you can uh, show to a voter. Um, especially with COVID-19, uh, that greeter judge is also responsible for helping manage the lines. So if there are lines and, and uh, those lines need to form outside, um, the greeter judge can help with that. While the voters are with the greeter judge, they should be completing the absentee ballot application, and they need to do so before proceeding to the SVRS judge. So they're filling in things like their name, their date of birth, their ID number, which could be the last four of their social security number or their full driver's license number, either or is okay. Um, their residential address and then their signing. Now, all those items that I listed are grade on the application and they're grade so that everybody knows what's required on the application. There are some other boxes there like the voter's phone number or email address. They're not great and therefore they're optional. So it's okay if those are left blank. Box six, however, asks the voter to write in their mailing address. Now, since we're not mailing the ballot to the voter, that box is not required for this activity. So if they do write it in, that's okay. But just so that we know that is not required. And then make sure that the voter signs before sending them to the SVRS judge. Voters who receive their absentee ballot in the mail have the option of returning it in person at one of our early voting locations. Now, depending on the volume of this activity, your head judge may or may not assign somebody specifically to monitor and administer this process. But just so that you're aware, you may be asked to fulfill this task in your early voting location. Now, later in the training, we're gonna talk in great detail about how this process works. But essentially, when we mail a ballot to a voter, we're sending it to them in a special kind of envelope called the signature envelope. Now the signature envelope has some information that the voter needs to complete on it. Their name, their address, they need to sign it, they need to have a witness. There's a variety of things that they need to complete. So what we're asking our election judge to do at the early voting location is do a visual inspection of that ballot, or excuse me, of that envelope to make sure that the voter has completed everything so that their ballot gets accepted. The next role is that SVRS judge or the computer judge. Again, SVRS stands for Statewide Voter Registration System, and that's the name of the database that we're using for this activity. 
So the first step generally is you're searching for the voter in the database using that information that they provided on that absentee ballot application. You're verifying their information specifically, their name, address, date of birth, and ID numbers. You'll be issuing a ballot and then you're essentially marking it in the central database that the, this person has voted. And that's a way to prevent them from walking to a different early voting location uh, and voting again. On the back side of the absentee ballot application is what's called the voter's certificate. And the voter doesn't need to complete that with the greeter judge, but they do need to complete it when they're issued that ballot by the SVRS judge. Uh, that's equivalent to signing the roster on election day. If the voter needs to register as part of this early voting process, they can also do that with the SVRS judge. So that SVRS judge, you'll need to view acceptable election day registration documents, just like we would do on election day. The voter would complete this uh, voter registration application. And then you as the election judge would fill out that election judge official use only section at the bottom. Uh, and then the rest of the transaction is very similar to uh, if the voter was pre-registered. You'll have them fill out the voter certificate and then issue them a ballot. So we have another position called the ballot judge. They will help retrieve the correct ballot based on wherever the voter is living at the time. So remember, each location has all of the ballots. So pictured here uh, is the bin in which the ballots are stored. So the ballot judge will need to go to the bin uh, knowing the voter's precinct and then grab the correct ballot. Uh, if you can imagine, this is an opportunity to make some errors. Um, so we want you to audibly verify that the ballot is for the correct precinct. And you're doing that with the SVRS judge. So you're both acknowledging, yes, this, is, this voter is from Roseville Precinct 4. Yes, the ballot that I have in hand and I'm giving to the voter is Roseville Precinct 4. Just like on election day, we need to initial the upper right hand corner of these ballots, but we're gonna ask you not to pre-initial any of the ballots, so do it as part of the transaction with the voter. Um, and the, the two initials that we'll need to do are uh, the SVRS judge and the ballot judge. So we need two sets of initials for every issued ballot. Uh, if the voter makes a mistake on their ballot, they can do that one for one exchange of a ballot. And so the ballot judge can uh, manage that process. They'll be able to spoil and reissue a new ballot. Um, for our SVRS judges, we use spoil in two different ways. Um, if the voter makes a mistake on their actual ballot, they can do that one for one exchange where they get a new ballot and give you their old ballot. That's called spoiling. We have a different process, which we're going to talk about in a separate training, in which if a voter is mailed a ballot and they come to you wanting to vote in person, we have to spoil that mailed ballot. So that's an entirely different process, but we do use that word spoil uh, in two different contexts. So just wanted to clarify. So we've been doing early voting for a few years here at Ramsey County. And what we've come to find out is that voters tend to go to the location that is closest to them. So for example, if you live in Roseville, you're probably going to go to the Roseville Library. Um, so what we have decided is that we're going to provide pre-printed blank ballots to locations based on their geography within Ramsey County. So for example, at the Highland uh, Golf Course location, that's the first T building, you'll be provided a lot of ballots for Ward 3, Ward 2, Ward 4, all of the precincts that are in that Highland area. However, we're not providing pre-printed ballots for some of, the some of the precincts that are quite a bit further away from your early voting location. So if you don't have a pre-printed ballot for say a Shoreview voter, and a Shoreview voter walks into your location, what do you do? Well, you use this ballot on demand printer. The, this device will print blank ballot ballots for any precinct within Ramsey County. So we're gonna be providing 
Uh, each head judge with specific instruction on how to use this. It's a very simple machine. Um, we will be providing you all at the location with written documentation in the form of a duty card, but that your head judge will also be able to provide instruction on how to use that device. Okay, another position is the equipment judge. Just like on election day, they'll be stationed at the ballot counter and they'll be there to assist voters who have any questions or need help when actually casting their ballot into the machine. Uh, this equipment judge should not allow any voters to leave with the ballot and they also shouldn't allow any ballot or any voters that came in with their ballot they received in the mail to then cast it into the ballot counter. We, do, we don't want any ballots that came through the mail going into the ballot counter. Just like on election day, they're also there to distribute I voted buttons or stickers. Next, we have the head election judge, who of course is in charge of the location. They're there to manage. They're the main contact with our office. They're responsible for completing any official forms. And then they'll be responsible too for bringing down the daily returns of materials. Our office will also be providing a variety of support for the early voting locations. So we'll have some area judges uh, that will visit the location that can provide uh, support on site. We'll also have the hotline that judges can call uh, with their SVRS specific questions. And then of course, there's always the main office phone.